Well, good morning, magandang umaga, and welcome to today's episode of My PI Dream. Today, we're going to start part B of that walk-in wardrobe that we did upstairs. We're going to finish it off with some nice doors to complement the nice interior cabinetry that we completed. Anyway, let's go ahead and get today's episode started. So without further delay, let's get today's video underway. But you can see this is the first time I've been able to get the truck inside our garage down here in our workshop uh, in over a month because all of this was spread all over the place. There was sawdust, there was wood. This whole workshop was doing what a nor normal workshop would do, make something. Anyway, I got it all cleaned up, but it's time to make it dirty again. So what we're going to do today in these boxes right here, in a couple of these boxes right here, is some of the hardware that we're going to use for doing our doors, our sliding barn doors that will close uh, that area where our walk-in closet is upstairs. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with this. Now here in the wardrobe area, we have to put a straight line across where we're gonna mount the rail. So go ahead and, and draw a line that's level all the way across. Make sure you have at least six inches above, above this area right here where you're going to mount the rail for clearance. And make sure you have enough area underneath it for the top of your doors to be able to close and do the enclosure of the opening that you have right here. Well, there you have it. There is the rail system for the rollers. And uh, it went up very easily. Like again, if you have the opportunity to get it where it's a single, not only the integrity of the, of the rail itself is stronger, it even looks better. Uh, so next step is to work on the doors. You can see over my shoulder here, I went ahead and I cut all the wood for the framing of both the doors. These are two doors side by side right here. And that's how they're gonna to slide together. They're gonna to meet together in the center. I had all different kind of plans on overlapping doors, one individual door, but because of the uniqueness and the size of the opening of our walk-in wardrobe area, uh, I, this worked out the best. That gives us the most amount of room uh, to enter and uh, pretty much that's what, it, what it's all about is, is maximizing the entrance into the walk-in closet. So this is what we're going to do with this. Uh, the next thing I need to do is I need to start preparing some of the boards that go, the vertical boards that go in between each piece of the frame. Uh, I'm, I'm milling everything from scratch here. This is all rough lumber, so it's taken me a little bit longer because I'm working with lumber that was cut down from a tree with a chainsaw and then I'm running it through my milling station here inside the workshop. So I'm gonna use my favorite Freud Pro dado set. This is a six inch uh, dado blade and you can cut up to seven eighth of an inch, almost one inch of a cut inside a board. And that's what we're gonna use to do the cuts inside the frames so that we can set our vertical boards inside each one of the door panels. all my boards and these are going to be used for the panels that go in between each one of the sections inside the framing. Now I chose to use the tongue and groove method. Uh, I have my my tongue bit you can see inside there the tongue bit right now inside my router and this will be for the groove. This will be the corresponding groove and normally the way it's set up is the the area that it cuts and here I'll give you an example of one that I already did. Uh, it will be the exact same on the other, but you can adjust them. So you can see this was my this was my test piece right here, and this is actually my final. 
This is my funnel. So this is my tongue. And then the corresponding board will have a groove cut on this side. You see I've already cut the tongue on this side. And I'm gonna cut all the tongues first, then I'll do all the grooves, then we'll put them together, and then we'll trim everything so it fits properly inside all the framing after everything is put together. Now I have two of the panels that I did yesterday. I glued them, clamped them, and I let them sit overnight. So these are ready to go ahead and be trimmed down. I have that one, and I have one on the table over there right now. I just did these right here, this panel right here, and that panel, which makes up the four panels that we're going to be putting inside here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to trim them down to the sizes that I need. So I'll be cutting them both on the lengthwise and the widthwise. I will be making sure that they are the size that I need to fill into these places right here. Then the next thing I'm going to do is sand. I'm going to sand. So these, this one and the one against the wall over there are ready. I'm going to go ahead and cut those. Sand them down, just a light sanding before I put them inside the framework inside here. And then we'll have to wait till tomorrow for these because these need 24 hours to dry before I release each one of the tongue and groove glue joints that we have on these two panels. <laughs> Now when I assembled the, the sides of the frame uh, to the pieces that connected together, I used these eight inch screws as I showed you earlier. And they have uh, no threads here, but when they go through this section right here, which is pre-drilled and this is not, it pulls these two pieces together very nice and tight. Now I have to cover up these holes. And what I'm using, I'm using these 10 millimeter dowels. These are about 3 eighths of an inch. And I'm uh, gluing them into the holes. And you see I have one done already here. And then I cut it off with a little hacksaw. Then I'll come later and I'll do sanding and we will go ahead and, and stain it again on this side right here. And it will match nice and clean and it'll be a nice finish to the side of the door. All right, I got my four decorative cross members here cut. I got them uh, milled down with the planer down to, oh, they're about three quarters inch thick and about three and three quarters inch wide. Now our normal Framing is about four and three quarters inch wide. Uh, I could have gone with the same exact size as you see right here uh, for the cross members, but since we have a narrow profile door, uh, I thought it would be better to put smaller uh, cross members inside here for the decorative piece. I think it will look better. And you're probably wondering, James, why do you have why do you have water bottles on your door? Well, the main reason they're on the door here is because uh, there was a little bit of a warp and a tip, a tip. If you have a little bit of a warp, what you can do, you can apply a little bit of weight on the opposite corners to correct the warp. Sometimes it takes several hours. Sometimes it takes maybe a few days. Maybe it'll take a week or two. Uh, but we're off. We had about oh, about half inch, three quarter of, quarter of an inch of a warp inside here. I actually had it in both of them. So you can see I'm doing a correction on both of those now. Uh, but that's no problem. Those will be taken care of with a little bit of counterweight on there. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I have to decide and this is up to you. Do I want to do an X brace here? Uh, do I want to do and nothing on the top? Do I want to put a single piece here? Nothing on the top. Do I want to put a single piece here and then a single piece over here? Also, do I want to make it fit right in this corner and go up to this corner? 
Or do I want to V it where it's half and half on both of these pieces, the same on this part? So th there is no right or wrong answer to that. Your choice is based upon your preference and what you think looks the best. I'm going to sit here for a moment, make my own decision, and I'll let you know what I think will look the best. After careful consideration and looking at different type of designs, I think I'm going to go with this design right here, where I mount it to the very bottom of the frame down here, uh, connect it to the center section of the frame, and then the top up there with a angle just like you see right here. Up this way, up that way. I'll just go ahead and mark these according to the 90 degree angle that we have here all the way around. And I'll cut these and fit these inside. And I'll do the same for the other door, but on the opposite side. So they kind of like point towards each other. It'd be like an arrow on this side pointing that way and an arrow on that side pointing this way. I think that'll look pretty good. And with the decorative bracing in place, I'm happy with the way this has come out. I, I like that the arrows are kind of pointing to each other. You know, it looks like an arrow on both sides. Or if you wanted to, and you wanted to point the arrows to the opposite direction, all you have to do is swap doors. Uh, of course, you have to take into consideration the handles. Do you want the handles on the inside or on the outside? Next thing that I want to do is I want to work on some decoration before we mount the roller assemblies to the top. What I want to do now is I want to do some decoration while I have it down here. I want to put some of the finishing hardware. And I found this really neat. This this really neat product by a company called, oh, it's called uh, Osco. Osco, you can see it on here. Uh, this is hex cap nuts. I actually use hex cap nuts on the pavilion when we did the pavilion build outside, but I use Simpson Strong Tie, uh, but it's it's different. It's a different type of, of, of uh, hex cap than what we have here. What I like about these, you can unscrew this. You can see the way it has here. You can unscrew the little cover, which is, this little cover here on the top. You can screw this in just for decoration, or if you have a longer screw, you can use it actually from strength like you would do in a corner post inside a pavilion. Uh, but what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just get a very short screw. I'm gonna go inside, and we're gonna mount this in some places on here. Like maybe, maybe a couple here, here, and then another one over here, and then maybe three or four uh, along this section right here, just to give a little bit of decorative accent uh, and highlight the barn doors. Now, I just want to show you something. I, I exchanged out all of these 12 inch sections, the multiple 12 inch sections, for a single, for a single rail for the roller assembly that we have here. And the reason I did that, because this just did not look good, but I couldn't get it online the one single continuous piece to go across here. So what I did was I got a hold of my good friends over at KMC Ironworks and I had them fabricate this for me. They got a piece of flat bar. Uh, what they did is they drilled out all the holes. They came over here and measured and they sent it out to a powder coating paint company here locally in Lipa. And now I have one piece and I am really happy now with this section here as we see it. Our next step is to put on some nice decorative trim work on the door. So we have a combination of natural wood and we have some iron works also. Uh, what we have is these hex cap nuts. You see the hex cap nuts? When you see the little cap that goes over the top, this is the decorative piece that goes on the top here. And the way we're going to mount it, we're going to take a screw. And these are uh, screw posts that have one side that will go through the screw just like this, go through the wood, we'll, we'll drill a hole here with our drill, our wood drill, and then on the back side, this little post uh, cap that goes on the back and it will secure it, it will make it nice and tight. And the finish on the back side will be this. Even though you don't really see the back side, the black will look very nice for the finish on the opposite side when you're inside the wardrobe area. Spacing for your hex cap nuts are personal preference. And mine, I already have, if you can see, I don't know if you can see, I marked them off already. And they're going to look something like this all the way down. Yeah, here we go. 
and I'll put a couple in the center and the amount that you put is also personal preference. You can put as many or as little as you want. And if you find that you don't have enough and you would like more, you can even later on, you can purchase some more and then what you can do is you can add them at a later date. With all the hex cap nuts installed, the next logical thing to do here is to install the handle. We're going to install this handle right here. This is going to be on the outside and this is going to be on the back side right here so you can open and close also from the back side. And you notice this is a very thin profile so it doesn't hit against the wall. So what we're going to do is on this one, on the inside of both of the doors, we're going to install this something like this right here. So you pull one door from that side and you pull the, this door over to this side so it's kind of a you know, like a very easy way to move the doors to the left and right when you're accessing the wardrobe. Once you've gotten your decorative hardware installed and your handle, the next logical step would be to install the little roller assembly that goes on the top that will roll on the flat bar that's connected to the wall. This is your opening and closing mechanism uh, for your closet. Now, in your instructions, it will give you specifications for how much space that you need between the top of the door and the roller itself and it's important that you get that correct because it has to do with the little stop that's going to go on the top that you'll be putting on later on so that the door itself doesn't jump the track and injure you. Now the way to get this nice and square is just use a square, take a square, put it up, you can mark your holes and drill uh, so that you have this perfectly square. Before we go any further we have to deal with a unique situation to our specific build here. Most of the times you won't have the issue that we have right here. Uh, I have one door mounted here because I just want to kind of show you how uh, the sliding rail is supposed to work and why we're going to try something a little bit different. Now, we have a little bit of an issue with our doorway entry on both sides, the wall on this side and the wall on this side are not straight, they're crooked. The contractor uh, builder uh, did a poor job of putting straight walls on both sides. Uh, and what happens is if one wall is further in than the other, and if you have two straight doors, of course they're not going to line up properly. So to address that issue, what we're thinking about doing, instead of using these guides, and the guides would normally go like this, and then you would see, here, let me go ahead and get the camera down. And, and the guide is just to it would go through the groove inside the bottom of the of the door and the door would move just like this back and forth and keep the door from moving in this direction either way uh, but that the fact that our walls are so out of square i'm going to try something that's a little bit unconventional we might come back to this and try to see if we can get this to work but i want to try something a little bit different and it has to do with putting a threshold right here let's go down to the basement and i'll show you a little bit more of what i'm talking about Here's a rough piece of lumber from some of the leftover wood from the beginning of the project. It's just rough dimensional cut. It was cut with a chainsaw and then a bandsaw to give us something that's workable. We're going to mill this down. We're going to mill this down to three quarters of an inch in thickness on both sides. And basically what we're going to do, this is going to be, like I said, a threshold where the door will slide this way. We'll use the router to cut out a section with one centerpiece for that, that little guide and it's going to fit up also inside the bottom of that groove in the door. We're going to try that and see if that will work. And this way the door will be the same. No matter if the wall is crooked this way or this way, this will always be exactly straight from one side to the other and the door should match up and close together nice and square.
And as you can see, using the plunge saw, I was able to get a very nice clean cut all the way down. So we're gonna use that against the fence of our table saw to do our second cut for a two and three quarter inch final width of this piece of lumber right here. Now this is the template that I use for the door frame itself. It's the actual size of the door frame, which is an inch and three quarters, which will give us, once we cut this off at two and three quarters, we'll have a half inch on this side, a half inch on this side, and we'll use a router to route out just a portion of this side, just a portion of this side, and leave enough in the center for a piece to fit up right inside that groove that you remember we left in the bottom of the door frame itself. Uh, and so we'll have a, something to actually guide it besides the edges here. And after a little bit of consideration, I decided to go with the dado stack instead of using the router to cut out the grooves on the both sides because I can go up to seven eighths of an inch on a dado stack right here. It may take several passes because you don't want to go too deep at any one time to avoid any kickback. So I'm going to go ahead and use the dado stack instead of the router and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Now before I do any sanding and selignum staining for the termites and doing regular staining thereafter, I'm gonna do a fit upstairs. I'm going to see how this fits up underneath the door, make sure this little track rail right here works fine. Then if all that works and, and the grooves are wide enough, which is here's our, our test door right here, and you look, there's plenty of room on both sides. And just imagine there's a slot right down the center. It should fit fine. Uh, then what I'll do is I'm going to bevel the edges right here. I don't know if I'm going to round it, do like a quarter corner round, or uh, I'm going to do a, a regular straight bevel. That way you don't stump your toe when you're crossing over from one area into the wardrobe. <laughs> permanently mount this that makes it very difficult to remove. So I got to thinking for a solution that would satisfy everything. Remember this is the rail, uh, rail guide, the door guide that goes across it like that which is the same as this little piece right here. I thought why not find the actual place that I want it to go on the floor, drill the holes, mount this, and then put this on top of it. So this is what I came up with. So now, this will fit, the threshold will fit right on top of the original rail and it'll actually give it additional support. Plus, this will keep everything nice and straight with our crooked walls. What do you think? Here's our final challenge. How do we get the lights on inside the wardrobe area here without doing anything really electrical and technical like a switch, a little relay switch that goes in the top that will open and close the electrical connection. I think we can do something much simpler so we can get our lights on and off without doing any electrical wiring. Let's see what we have inside the basement, what we can come up with. Now I have these organizer bins here in the workshop in the basement and I store things. I'm like a hoarder. Whenever I have a project, I throw things inside here that I might be able to use at a later date. And uh, going through what I see, uh, I think there's, I think something like this. <laughs> I think this might be the answer to our problem uh, about not using electrical and doing something mechanical, manual. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So how am I gonna take this and make this turn on and off my lights? Well, it's not just this right here. What I come up with is I believe I can use this, a tie strap, and a little bit of super glue, and it will solve all of our problems. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the back side. I've already taken one of the, these where I took the nail out, and I'm going to trim it down so that is the same thickness where that groove is as our tie strap. And basically the tie strap will go inside like this right here and then we'll put a little bit of a bend you'll see it'll be something like this we'll do a little bit of bend and we'll attach one on each side of this right here and here let's go over to a light switch and i'll show you exactly what i'm talking about and what we'll do is when the door opens and closes it will go like this to that side and that side to turn on and off the light switch inside the wardrobe closet area So 
this is the plan. This should turn on the switches when the door is open and close it when the door is closed. Let's check it out and see if it works. So the way it should work when the door opens, those two little plastic tie straps should run across the two switches over here and the light should come on. Let's see. There we go. Look at there. Let's head upstairs and take a look at the doors completed and installed. Well, there you have it. What do you think? Doors and our custom threshold for the sliding and the custom bar on the top that we actually got done uh, and fabricated by KMC Ironworks instead of using the individual uh, pieces for the railing. I like that a lot better. Now let's take a look at that final, final way that the, the lights click on. There, look at there. One thing I didn't mention during the build, I went ahead and installed this soft close mechanism. This little piece of hardware connects to the flat bar for the rail, and then there's a stop on the top. Let me show you kind of what it does. And you see, and what it does is it slowly closes the door on its own, soft close like you see with so many of the new, newer cabinets these days. So anyway, uh, completed. Well, another project completed on the bucket list of things to do here at Villa Fleas. I hope you enjoyed it. And I want to thank the folks who actually helped a little bit with the project, and that's supplying some of the materials. And the materials that were supplied was Scott and Marshula for some of the wood from the trees that they cut down on their lot. Really helped with getting this project complete, as well as the wonderful folks at KMC Ironworks. KMC Ironworks provided that flat bar. They did all the drilling, the, the powder coating, they did everything so I could have a continuous piece along the top there and then have individual pieces, which I really didn't like. It just never did look quite straight enough. Uh, well, I hope you enjoy projects like this. And if you do, please give me a thumbs up. Please share. And if you have not subscribed, you can click on that little My PI Dream Heart in the bottom right hand side of your screen. And if you ring that bell, you'll be notified the next time I upload a new video. So until such time from right here in the very beautiful Philippines, you have a wonderful and blessed day. today's episode and you would like to see more just like these just click on one of the helpful links over to your right and you might be able to pick up on some good information on DIY projects how to or if you are interested in moving to the Philippines and building you'll find answers there as well